Okay. So good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk on application catalogs and how to understand them. Uh, your speakers today will be Alexander Tevelkov, that's me, and I'm one of the core developers of Morano project and the driver of Glare Artifact Repository and Kirill Zaitsev, uh, the PTL of Morana Project, and uh, the core of Community App Catalog, and well, the great guy after all. So uh, today we'll speak about uh, the different entities we call catalogs. Like there are a number of catalogs in OpenStack. Like there is Murano, there is Glare, there is Community Application Catalog, and different people usually mean different things uh, when they speak about catalogs and cataloging applications. For example, even Keystone has a catalog, a service catalog, and some people think that this may be used as application catalog. They are obviously wrong, but our talk for now is our task for this talk is to like dot all the I's and cross all the T's to understand what's the app catalog, what it really is, and what are these projects, which are often called application catalogs, should do with it. Uh, but let's first understand the projects themselves. So uh, it all began with Murano, and I'll pass the ball to Murano's PTL trail, so he'll tell the story of this project and how it relates to application catalog mission. Mm -hmm. So it all dates back to somewhere around Havana, and Murano originally started with uh, complex Windows apps as a service. Uh, apps like MS SQL, uh, Active Directory, uh, complex cluster Windows-based solution, and so on and so forth. So originally, Murano was something like a Windows as a service or Windows uh, data center as a service, hence the name. Uh, but, well, Murano, even originally, Murano was more about apps and less about Windows. So, with time, a Linux support was added, and basically any operation uh, system support was added. Uh, mind that that was a no Big Tent era. So, we couldn't be, at that time, we couldn't call ourselves something like app orchestrator or pretty much any orchestrator of sorts because there was heat and that would mean uh, unnecessary competition. But well, hence, uh, there was some identity search. Murano tried to find what it was, how it was. And finally, Murano, and while we were looking for our identity, we were building more and more apps. And those apps were more and more complex and big. Uh, and at the, some point in time, they were big enough, and a lot of those, uh, so that we could finally say that we should be the app store of the OpenStack. The, hence, the official name is the application catalog service. Um, and yeah, then there was Big Tent. So once the Big Tent was a thing, Murano applied and was like one of the first, first or second Big Tent project uh, with this kind of mission. This mission hasn't been changed. I think there was one tiny little change to it, um, more of a wording thing, or well, to provide an application catalog service so that users can compose, deploy uh, composite environments on an application abstraction level. That's the, pretty much uh, our mission since the beginning of time, the beginning of Big Ten. Um, but what does it exactly mean? Uh, here's how we imagine the well, application lifecycle uh, stack. Um, and in this stack, we usually see different roles for different uh, catalog users. So there are obviously should be some people who develop the apps. So they, these are the people who create the apps, publish, and distribute them somehow. Then the cloud operators are the folks who decide which apps go to the app catalog, to the current cloud. Uh, I don't know. They uh, design the role basic tasks, design what goes in, what goes out, how people can use them. And finally, the end users are exactly those who well, find the apps and say, I want this app, compose them into the application stack they need and deploy and finally use them. Uh, that's how we imagine things, but uh, here is how most people actually interact with the app stores or the app catalogs, right? Uh, the first one is solely about development. You, when you imagine, say, an app store, you don't really imagine developing for the app store. And the six is deployment. Again, it's not really about the catalog usage. 
And, well, what we really know in Murano how to do is we know how to write apps, deploy apps, and combine them, um, have the life cycle for these apps. Uh, but some of these things are more about categorizing and catalogizing uh, things. And this is not exactly what Murano is good at. So these four middle blocks are a little bit special. There's an, an, an inner story, um, in, on the, on the, <laughs> there's an inner story of their own inside there, uh, which has nothing to do with a complex deployment and orchestration scenarios. And that's why they were, we decided that it would be logical to extract some of that functionality to a standalone component. And that is the component that is known today as Glare. Oh, Glance? Oh. In what? the glare, in the glare. Or, but let's, yeah. uh, let's nail the things down, since it's not a very easy thing to understand, and that's why I'm here to help. So, uh, as Kirill said, uh, it uh, all, be, uh, all began with the extraction of these uh, four middle components into a standalone service, but in the beginning we just were doing it as part of Murano itself. We just identified a set of use cases we need to handle for this uh, application repository thing. And this would be just plain old index of binary assets. Uh, that's it. We are just cataloging, uh, catal cataloging binary assets. Uh, these assets has, have some metadata. They have some dependencies between them. They should have versions assigned. And they should have some, well, pretty basic uh, role-based access control rules and other stuff you usually expect from the catalog. And initially, we started implementing this uh, inside Murano itself. Like, Murano can do lots of things, and we started just baking this package repository thingy into Murano. Uh, and the basic, the first implementation was pretty naive. We just even were storing the packages as zip archives in the SQL server, data, in MySQL database as blob fields. Those of you who are developers probably know that's really bad. Well, luckily the size of the packages was small enough and this didn't impact uh, performance much, but still it's bad from a contextual point of view. And uh, at some point we understood that we are reinventing the wheels. We are just building this, the things which has no Murano specifics in it. Uh, other projects in OpenStack ecosystem would probably have to do the same. Like, for example, at that point of time, Heat was uh, thinking about how to catalog the Heat templates for their usage. They were using Git as a storage for that, pack for that uh, templates, and they needed some more appropriate way to, like, to have a catalog of packages. So uh, we went to the community and proposed to spin up a new project, which would be a repository of... Uh, assets of, of artifacts, we call them, but we got a counter-proposal from the technical committee. Uh, once again, this was time, uh, this was a pre-Big Tent era, and there could be no competing projects in uh, OpenStack ecosystem. So uh, the technical committee said that since there is already an OpenStack project which acts as a catalog of assets, and the project's name was Glance, so instead of just spinning up a new project, we should join the Glance team and just enhance Glance with uh, ability not to just catalog the VM images, but other asset types as well. And so we decided doing that. And this is a development history of the feature known as a Glance Artifact Repository, or Glare. Uh, so we began development in the Kilo cycle, and by the Liberty, we had the first uh, working uh, prototype. And at that point, we were considering it as the uh, version 3 of Glance API. Glance had uh, two major releases of their uh, application programming, in programming interface, the V1 and V2. And we uh, envisioned uh, the artifacts uh, interface as the version 3 of Glance API. Uh, however, uh, the open, OpenStack ecosystem evolves, and uh, it becomes more and more user-centric. And because of this evolution, uh, there is uh, no such user-facing entity as a project. Uh, so in some sense, there is no such thing as Glance at all. There is Images API. And Images API is a very specific thing which is intended to be very stable, very well maintainable, and it should not be like, changing and evolving with time uh, unless we want to increment the major version. And it should be focused on images. 
And Artifacts API, which we have implemented, uh, eventually was a different thing. So uh, we had a long conversation with uh, different stakeholders in the community, and finally we've decided that uh, instead of being the uh, V3 API of Glance or V3 API of Images, we should have a new standalone API which would be called Artifacts API or Glare API. And this happened in Mitaka. We have, uh, we have made a standalone API specification for Artifacts, uh, Artifacts API. And in the Newton cycle, in the last cycle we have just finished, uh, the working group for this API have split into the standalone working group, standalone project called GLARE. So since it's not, not now unrelated to Glance, the acronym uh, translates not as Glance Artifact Repository, but rather like GLARE Artifact Repository. So it's recursion like GNU. And, well, this process was kind of painful. You may see by the changes of Glance mission. It all began like the uh, the mission to provide a bootable uh, data assets, bootable VM images, then it was changed to uh, accommodate the needs of artifacts, and it was more generic, uh, more, more generic statement, and then finally it was changed again, and uh, now it says about the bootable VM images once again. Uh, this just demonstrates how complicated the process to align all the APIs and all the project missions uh, in the upstream, but uh, eventually it all leads to the better granularity and better user experience. So uh, this, uh, this thing, the glare, now covers these two blocks in our uh, usage stack, but uh, what about the upper two blocks? So. They were not they were not used before the Vancouver summit, and then another project appeared. Kirill, please tell us. So yeah, winding back to Vancouver summit, uh, apps that OpenStack.org has been presented there, and the ultimate goal of the project uh, is was and is to have a single entry point, a single place to discover all things that run on OpenStack. Um, and from the App user perspective, from the catalog user perspective, that's, uh, this exactly fulfills this publish and distribute and find an import part of the app lifecycle workflow from the catalog work workflow. Um, it was already a big tent era, so it's not just a website or some Git repositories, but an OpenStack project with a mission. And here the main part is to give users a central location to find and retrieve apps, cloud native apps. Uh, originally started with Murano, Glance, and Heat templates, now with Tosca, always uh, open to contributions of both individual assets or new assets types. Uh, so not limited to any of those. Uh, so here's what it is now. It's a website at appsopenstack.org hosted by uh, the foundation. Uh, go visit, download the things you like, share the things you have. Uh, no really extra cloud components needed, of course, if you want Murano, you'll need Murano on the cloud, but, and heat if you want to consume some of the heat templates. But, well, strictly you don't need those for glance images. And there's a Horizon dashboard plugin available that will allow you to uh, do that from inside your cloud. And still, we have some limitations there. Uh, the main thing right now is that uh, all the assets are described in a big uh, static YAML. Uh, the way to add an asset there is view-based, so you have to submit a review. You need to know just a tiny bit about how submitting works, how OpenStack review process works. And we have a simplistic V1 API that's, that allows you to retrieve all, this, all the things. Uh, but doesn't yet allow you to upload things through the API. Uh, those things are roadmapped to be fixed in Okata. Um, so here we have the three catalogs of things. So how do those align? Yeah, so we just reviewed, quickly reviewed the three projects, uh, which are usually called catalogs, and now we have like three major questions. Like there is an application catalog Murano, but it actually does not have the actual catalog capabilities. 
there is a community app catalog, which is also a catalog, and how does it fit in with Murano? And then finally, there is artifact repository or glare. How does it fit in as a picture? And the answer is that when we are just speaking about these components, we are looking from developers' point of view. That's how developers see this, like component one, component two, component three. But the users, as we said before, do not care about projects or components. The user, users just consume a single application catalog user story. They have a single feature, single catalog experience, and they just have a single workflow, starting with create, ending with deploy. And they actually don't care much about what are actually bits of software code running under the hood of different infrastructure solutions. So if we look at this, we just understand that there is a, an application catalog feature, which is much more than any of the projects besides it. So is it a program? Yeah, kind of. At some point, uh, OpenStack had the notion of programs. Then it was abandoned in favor of other notions. But in this case, we may speak about app catalog as a feature, which is more than any of the projects uh, which, which compose this feature. So yeah, it's kind of program. Uh, we just need to understand that the projects which compose this feature are still different from organizational point of view. They're, uh, they're made of different people working on different schedules in different communities in different time zones. But what we are trying to achieve right now is to align the roadmaps of these different projects, to align the goals of the teams, to align their, well, whatever code we write, to meet the single user's goal, to get the application catalog up and running from A to Z. And that's why we are trying to build, bind all those things together. They have value on their own, like Murano may deploy application packages without any community app catalog thing. Community app catalog may be listed even if you don't have your OpenStack Cloud at all, it has its value on its own. And Glare is just an optional backend. It's an implementation detail on how to store images, uh, or images, images, or heat templates, or Murano packages, or any other artifacts. But in synergy, they will give the end users the most benefits. And so that's what we are working on as a three distinct community initiatives to make a one. And so this is a work in progress, and Kirill, being a PTL of Murano, can give us an update on what's actually going on in the community, a community report. So yeah, kind of community report of things uh, going on right now. Uh, here's what we have in, uh, achieved in Newton. Um, so there's the unified dashboard. I th actually think we, all, we only merged it just right, bef right after Newton, so you need a more recent version. but. Anyway, uh, it's a single horizon dashboard to browse remote and local applications, and that's the way, like, that's the way forward. That's the way we see it, it should go. Uh, it's gone, going to evolve. So now it allows you to see uh, both the remote assets in the app catalog and the local assets in, uh, say, local apps in Murano. Um, uh, then Glare has been incubated into a standalone project has the Artifacts uh, V1 API uh, released. It's not yet a Big Ten project, but that's an intentional decision to have a faster development pace at this point. But that's gonna, probably going to change, and the Glare is going to, be, going to apply for a Big Ten. And Glare is experimentally used both by Murano as a backend for storing the assets. And we're trying to abandon and deprecate our database storage and for the community app catalog as a backend, we are really close to well, deploying a staging server with uh, the Glare. All the bits are already there, already here. Uh, that's how it actually looks like right now. So we have the single app catalog dashboard uh, with all the stuff there. And by the way, if you don't, if you only need Murano, if you don't only need app catalog UI, uh, it will still work together. Oh or without each other. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, intended to work in synergy. Um, and here are some of the plans that we have for Okata and beyond. Well, first of all is 
adoption of Glare V1 for both uh, Murano and the App Catalog backend. Uh, in Murano, we use the experiment, experimental V0.1 uh, thing. So now that Glare has published the V1 and it's stable, we're going to transition to that. Uh, same with the uh, apps OpenStack.org. We had plans to use the experimental V0.1, but since V1 is now there, we're going to use that, just that. Uh, then improved API for the app catalog that would allow you to uh, log in, upload from the API, uh, possibly the UI improvements that would allow you to upload from the uh, app catalog U dashboard from the app catalog UI. And finally, we are actually doing a lot of things to improve operator's life. So we want these three components to be deployed as easy as a single one. We're working, there's a lot of work uh, on the Murano side on making, installing and having Murano, sim uh, having Murano installed simply. And yeah, finally big time for Glare. And well, there's always, we we'll always like to welcome new contribution possibilities. All the three projects are open for new contributors, uh, be it, or new contributions, be it uh, the assets, new assets types, code contribution, user feedback, operator feedback, stuff like that. And I think that's all we wanted to say today. I hope we have cleared up the situation and the confusion with all the app catalogs in OpenStack. Yeah, and if you have any unanswered questions, we are here to answer them. Hmm? I'm not sure if you have a mic. No, Yes, of course. Uh, in, Murano, in Python Murano client, we started that work, I think, a couple of cycles ago to have our own uh, um, plugin for the OpenStack client. At the previous summit, we had a uh, conversation exactly about that on the App Catalog working sessions. Uh, I think we had two conversations, one about the dashboards and the second about the CLI. And we implemented the dashboards but didn't touch the CLI yet. But I we agreed, um, we agreed yes. between Murano and the community app catalog to combine them. So for the open set plan, do you, I believe yeah. the that's exactly the case, exactly. That's a very good question because uh, this OpenStack unified client is a very good example of the users caring about features and not projects. Like the old clients had all those, all those commands starting like Nova, list something, or hit, list something. Uh, in the unified client, uh, the users care about OpenStack and their features. They say OpenStack servers list. And uh, in this case, we, this should be one of the integration points of these three projects into a single app catalog as a feature. Uh, and this will be like... OpenStack applications. Yes, OpenStack applications mm -hmm. list. And with different... So it has to be designed properly to include both local and remote case, but it should be a single entry point of the users to work with different kinds of applications provided by different servers. Uh, regardless of which particular services do they have in a lo local cloud. Okay, Other questions? Yeah? Sorry. <laughs> Is there any connection between a, a, an application catalog and a, and a running application? Is it possible to identify for example, an actually an instance of a running application? Sorry, I didn't an, hear An instance of the running application. Sorry? an instance of the running application. Yeah, so the question is uh, how to identify the instance of the running application. So uh, it depends on what particular OpenStack service you use to run the application. Uh, from implementation point of view, it depends, as I said. So as we have demonstrated uh, right now, we support different kinds of applications in the cloud. This may be the, the hits, uh, hit templates, uh, Oasis Tosca blueprints, Morana packages, or just plain images uh, with pre-baked software. 
Uh, but as we said, from user's point of view, these are just applications, and they have to, uh, they have to be discoverable in the same way. And that's where another OpenStack project uh, may come handy. Uh, there is a project called Searchlight, and it's like a cross-indexing uh, cross thing which allows you to index uh, different types of resources owned by different types of OpenStack projects, uh, but uh, like group them or arrange them by mm, different kinds of metadata associated with them. And so uh, if we just have a centralized way to spin up applications, then we may add appropriate uh, meta informations to them. And so we may use Searchlight to search the resources which belong to a particular application application entity, the instance of a particular application. And uh, this is yet to be defined. Uh, this is another point of uh, integration between different projects to have the combined and unified user experience. But we're definitely working towards yeah, that. We, we actually had this kind of conversation when we were discussing the unified dashboard that we should be somehow able to identify that, say, if you have a glance image and you use that as an application, then probably the VM spawned from that image is the, is the running application. So, of course, with Murano we have that, but you may not have Murano. So, yeah, we had that, we've discussed that, but it's complicated. We'd like to do that. It's, there's not an easy solution to that, but, yeah. But there is a way towards. So there is a, there that's is a clear direction way where I, to go, I agree. and, yeah. The glare, the glare, yes, it does. So it's a separate service, a listening on independent port, and it's listed in Keystone Service Catalog as artifact service. So it's, 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 it's independent, and by now, the version one even has a distinct code base. Uh, the experimental version 0 0.1 shared the same code repository with the main lens, but it turned out that the code overlap is reasonably small. Glance has lots of uh, image-specific things, and it's much easier to create a cleaner and lighter uh, implementation from scratch. So we decided to separate the repositories. Uh, we, of course, we use we use the same libraries. For example, we use the so-called Glance Store library to access the underlying uh, storages to retrieve the actual bits, actual binary information from, say, Swift or Ceph or whatever you use to store, uh, to, st to store your bits. But the source codes are different for Glance and Glare. So theoretically, you may install Glare without having Glance. I don't know if it makes sense or not, but at some point, I believe it will be. So you're because right, right now, Murano is using v01, the experimental thing. And the experimental thing is currently in the uh, Glance code base. It's in Glance code base, yeah. but it's, a, it's still separate. It's point. a separate project, but yeah. So and it's separate it's point. It's a bit Keystone. complicated with all this moving from a V3 to a separate API to a separate project. I understand all that. I regularly get that question, that kind of questions about that contribution. Yeah. There will be a migration, so there will be a deprecation period, first of all. So by now, the, gla the glare support in Murano and Newton is experimental. By default, Murano still uses its legacy database-based backend. And like if you're using Murano in production, you're probably using the legacy glare database and, le and le uh, the de legacy non-glare database unless you configure it as otherwise. So what we plan for Okata in Murano is to uh, switch this default to uh, have uh, to, to be to, to use glare by default and glare v1, not the v v01, and uh, announce the legacy the legacy implementation of storage as deprecated. Uh, deprecation in OpenStack means that it's there for at least a cycle. And uh, it means that if it's announced as deprecated in uh, Okata, it will be removed not earlier Queens. than... Queens. 
queens and no. Okata, Pike, and only in queens and yeah, so. so Officially, we, Murano doesn't have this badge, follow standard deprecations, but uh, we want to apply for that, and there's no reason to break the rules. And by the yeah. time we announce the deprecation, they'll have the migration utility, obviously. It yeah. will be just part of Murano, which announces we don't, the We don't have that now, but that's a really good feature request. Definitely need to note that. Other questions? If you're raising your hand, but I don't see you, just please yeah, speak up. The lights are very, very, very bright. <laughs> I just don't see the faces. faces. There are yeah. some. But if there are no other questions, then thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. I hope this Use talk the applications. Was... Write the applications. Launch the applications. Yeah. That's it. We love applications. And <laughs> download them from Community App Catalog. Yeah. Don't forget that. Okay, thanks. <laughs>